Hey guys, this is Eric Wanganer with Wanganer Racing. Today's video is the difference between the flow on a non-back cut intake valve versus one that has a back cut. This is really considered part one, because part two, we're gonna see what it actually does on the dyno. Because flow benches are cool and stuff and seeing what they actually moves as far as flow. But really what we're after is making more power. So we're gonna test both these on the dyno. So this is your first step. This would be part one, part two would be in there. If you're a channel member, I'm gonna drop this flow sheet that I'm gonna show everybody into that channel link that I sent you. If you're not a channel member, I'm putting a link in the description for this video. You can sign up to be a channel member. It does cost some money, but you get a lot of benefits. One, I'll answer your call whenever you call, but other things as well as for one, another thing I guess is um, you get the dyno results as I'm doing it. So as I'm dynoing, I text you guys and you guys know what's going on, but to it. So. The engine that's gonna be used for this particular dyno test when we do this, it's gonna be an LS engine. It's a 408 cubic inch uh, LS. I use the same engine for the small block, uh, sorry, the LS cam challenge. Um, it's had like 28 different cams on it, six or seven different heads. Most of them are in this book, by the way. You can, if you purchase the PDF bundle, which is also I'll put a link in the description, you can see all the previous dyno tests that was done with this LS engine. This is what's gonna happen with it now. It has flat top pistons, it still has a hydraulic roller camshaft, but we're probably gonna test three different cams with varying degrees of duration on the intake and exhaust side. And the reason for that is I wanna see if maybe the trend changes, like maybe with the non-back cut valve does something with the smaller duration camshaft versus the larger duration camshaft. So maybe we'll be able to see it. So we're not just gonna be one camshaft, test the back cuts, call it quits. There'll be three on each. So what head is gonna be used? And I'm excited because I finally got it done. This is a set of Promax small bore LS3 heads. I had dyno tested them stock before. And in stock form with this um, Texas Speed Stage 2 camshaft, it made 685 horsepower. With that same camshaft, no other head beat this, including the AFR LS3 Mongoose head that was full CNC ported. Um, the Promax large bore never made as much. Nothing else made as much, but in fairness to the head, the reason why it made so much is because its chamber was by far the smallest. It had a 57cc chamber. I wanted to come up with a CNC program for it, so this is the very first head that's came off the CNC program. This head's only available through me, it's not available through Promax, but I did a CNC program for these small bore LS3 heads, and it turned out really, really nice. And I'll show you the flow numbers and all that stuff with it. But now it's CNC ported, and we're gonna test the different valves. So this particular head, because it's made for a small bore, uses a smaller valve than the traditional LS3 heads. This one uses a 208 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. Um, so Victory Titanium Valves was nice enough to help with this cause, and they sent some titanium valves to test for this. So I'm gonna show up, to, I'm gonna grab the camera and I'll show you the valves and how much the flow difference there was with this head, and you get to see it. But this is what will be tested and these are the valves. So I'll show you before and after and all the other kind of cool stuff with it as well. So let me grab the camera, let me show you the numbers, less yapping. Here are all the valves, obviously this is the exhaust valve, but these are the valves that um, I'm gonna talk about. So if you get the PDF bundle, mention that again, you'll see the flow numbers for the heads initially. These are the Promax small bore LS3 heads in the stock form, except for they weren't stock. When I got the heads, they didn't seal up. So I had to redo the valve job and blend it. And this is that after the blending and stuff. This is the valve that was used. This is the one that comes from Promax. And what a back cut is, which is easier to see on these, that bottom line right there, that's your seat angle. This top one here is called the back cut. Let me grab a pointer. That back cut actually does affect flow. So just to help you, you've got your seat and then you got the back cut. The stock valve from Promax, which they don't even do this now, and don't ask me why, but this valve, when I got it, it had a seat and then we had a back cut. I think I added a little bit more to it when I redid the valve job, just because that's what I do when I do them. But this is how they came in stock form. Here lately, when I've been ordering them, they didn't even have a back cut, they'd have nothing. So they essentially look like that one. See how there's no back cut, just a seat. So this is the stock valve in the stock form. Also, it looks like this one might have been um, hollow stem because and I don't know how well the camera's gonna capture this. That usually when they're like that, they're hollow stem. But 
I haven't got any heads from them since that have been this way. But here's its flow in its stock form. And you could tell this made 685. It flowed 351 at 620 or yeah, 625 lift, which is what the cam was. It dropped off hard after that. The 400 number, which we need to pay attention to because this plays a huge part, was 257. And this is on a 4030 bore on my signs bench. The exhaust flowed um, 258 peak. Well, I this is after blending. This is completely, I should have pointed that out. I do a crappy job sometimes with these videos. This is stock before I did any blending. And this is after the valve job and blending. And I couldn't run it stock because, again, they didn't seal up. So I had to redo the valve job. And my valve job flows a bit more, hence this. So you can see the difference. So, I mean, look, stock at 600, it goes 327. I went 344 now. I mean, not now, but that's with the valve job being redone. And again, that was with the stock valve. Okay, so that's what this is. Now, to the good stuff. This column right here is now the ported head. So this is this one, which I'm gonna show you. This is your exhaust ports. Oh, they're so beautiful. The intake ports and chambers, and this is nice. I gotta say, it, it turned out really, really well. I'm really proud of this. But um, 208, you can tell there's some shadows in there, which is fine. Usually there's shadows here because there's a lump here because of the bowl on the exhaust side's bigger. But in case you're wondering, the stock CC for the heads was 250 CC intake runner. It's now 265. The chambers are 57 when they come off the machine. I've milled these down, which I may mill even further. And you can see some shadows where it had been run before. No big deal. And by the way, we're still playing with that because the way the, the top cut comes in, we're trying to adjust the CNC machine to get it to come in different. So we're still playing with it. This being the first one. Anyway, this is the big part. So here's our titanium valve from Victory. And this is our stock valve that came with it. What I wanted Victory to do is I wanted them, because they could be in a custom valve, they can do whatever you want. I wanted a huge back cut because I really want to see a difference. And if you notice, it has a gigantic back cut, which is what I wanted. Still 45 degree seat. All these are 45. So 45, and I believe that's a 30. I have to look in the box, but I believe it's a 30. Anyway, that's your back cut. Here's the flow numbers. So this is with the back cut. This cord keeps snagging on literally everything. If you look now, this is important to pay attention to. At 400 lift, it goes 271. And then at 500, it's 317. 550, 337, at 600, it's 341, and then it drops off 337, and then it climbs back up. And that one, one inch of valve lift, which we won't get to, is 355. So peak, so we're going to be about 650 lift, 337, but really 341. But really strong at 400, 271, look at two, 300, 218. Pretty outstanding. Now here's where it gets tricky. This is the no back cut valve. And as you can tell, it's back angle is less too. So this would give me, cause really we're not, we are testing the back cut, but essentially what we're really looking at is does low lift flow make more of a difference than high lift flow? Cause look at this, this is the valve, no back cut. Same head, didn't change anything, just switch valves. 400 went from a 271 to 250. We lost 21 CFM there. And if you, Look at 300, we lost considerably more there too, from a 218 to 193, wow, right? Look at 500, from a 316 to a 299, it's a big loss. 550, 336 to 314, a huge loss. 600, 341 to 332, that's a big loss. But look how the tables turn. At 650, we go from a 337 to 346, it gained 10, not having a back cut. At 700, 341 to 360. See how it's reversing? Except for here at 800, 347, 340 is still down. 352 to 349 down. And that peak at one inch valve width, 355 to 357. So it does help in this 700 range by quite a bit, but it's horrible at the lower lifts. So the back cut, really, you wouldn't think it. This is what may, kills me, and people don't understand this. Like, I port heads. You know, the backyard guys, they get out their grinder, and they're grinding away on heads because I used to be that way too. You're grinding on your heads just to gain flow. 
Oftentimes, if you never touch the valve job or never touch the valve, you're lucky if you gain 10. That back gut gained 21. No grinding needed. So that was kind of interesting. But then I was like, wow, man, I really thought it was going to be better because this is the prototype. So I was like, man, hmm. Let me grab the, the uh, Pro Max valve and I'll reflow it, the same valve that it came with, which was this one. And that it doesn't have near as much back cut, so it has not as much as that, but it has more than none. And as the tell, the numbers really did change because now it's 266 at 400. So not quite as good as having that big thick back cut. At 500, 317 with a thick back cut to this one's 310. So it's still down there. But look at 550, 337, 329, still down seven. But it starts changing at 600, 341 to 345, much better. And look at 650 from a 337 to 360. We're rounding up, we round up. So this is a pretty good game. Then it drops off and starts coming back. So I was like, wow. And that's with this valve. So the stock one. So part of it, in case you're wondering too, is I designed it for use with the stock valve. But the idea is by the heads with the valves, that's how the program should be. It won't be either one of these. But these help me with the tail, the difference. So the dyno will really be telling between this one and this one. Now, because my mind is very curious on the model that we made this port off of, I thought I'm gonna try something different. And here's what I did, because there's one more column. What I did is these are all 45 degree valve jobs, which in case you're wondering, that's this seat angle right here that's in the head, 45. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Because I, I was doing other R&D at the time on some small block Chevy heads. And every time I fit, switched to the 50 degree, man, did it wake it up. So this column right here on the model, not on the head I'm going to use on the dyno, I put a 50 degree valve job on. So I took the, this is the Pro Max valve, and all I did was went to my valve refacer and cut this to a 50 degree, and then also cut the valve job itself here to a 50 degree and blended it in. Same port. It's the only thing that changed was around the seat. So this is what I mean, you guys go grinding all you want. The biggest change comes from the valve job and the um, valve, because look how much this changed. So this was the 45 and this is the 50. Obviously the 50 sucks at the lower lifts, don't really care. I don't know that it'll matter, maybe we'll get to see. But if you look at that, uh, 139 to a 130. So it lost nine from a 45 to a 50. At 300 lift, it went from a 206 to 200, so also it lost six, but here's 400, 266 to a 268. Now it's gaining the 50 degree as a 400. Look at 500, 310 to 318, which is the best. 550, we went from a 329 to 335, which is also close to the best. The no back cut beat that. Or sorry, the back cut, the heavy back cut beat that. And then at, this is 600, we went from a 345 to a 352, which is the best of all of them. All right, 650. We went from a 360 to a 359, almost a wash, which by the way, it beats everything. This is the model, so don't worry about that. And then at 800 lift, I believe that's it. We went from 337, 338, still gain. 344 at 900, no, that's 800. 344 to a 346, 353 to 350, it's down a little bit there at 900. At one inch, 359 to a 358, almost a wash. So in general, that 50 degree is better overall. So we average these numbers besides here. Well, I guess average it's still, I'd have to, I think I did that. I still think it was up a little bit, but the 50 degree is better. So you're like, well, you should dyno test that. Here's a problem. These are coated titanium valves and they are worth their weight in gold, but they're also pretty expensive. So you got one set obviously here, and then another set here. These are not cheap. So just to give you an idea, like a set of eight's about 1500 bucks because they're coated. So anyway, um, what I'm thinking about doing is taking, I've already sent another head to get cut anyway. I'm gonna cut another head, brand new head, and I've got the steel valves to go for it. And I think what I may do is on the dyno, Test this head, because it's 45, no back cut versus back cut. You just saw the flow numbers. 
and then put on the other head that I put a 50 degree on, but it will have steel valves. So that weight may make, make it maybe not RPM because of valve float and do the same test again. So maybe in case you're wondering what the exhaust side does, it's pretty good. This is what it does. 276 at peak at 400 to 201. I mean, it's, it's, it's running good. 600 to 253. I mean, I ain't worried about the exhaust. This thing's going to make some steam. And I did do a couple other things I'm going to tell you about because I want to get the most out of this head. I milled down the chambers because I looked at the head that I'd run before, which was an 821 head and saw what its free drop was. And what I did was I milled this to get to the same free drop, but I still think I got plenty of piston and valve clearance. So what I'm probably going to do is take this head to Dunsworth with the titanium valves and I'm going to check the actual piston and valve on the biggest cam that we're going to run. And then I'm probably going to mill off some more on this to get it down further as far as the chamber size. Because as it sits now with the 55 cc chamber, I'm about 13 to one, which is great. But if I could get it like 13 and a half to one, even better, right? I want to see a bigger difference, more power, whatnot. So just for fun, I'm going to weigh all these valves just so you see. Took a little bit. Okay, so this is your stock Promax. 112.5 grams. Not bad. Out of curiosity, this one's been ground to 50, so it has been taking some material off. About a gram. Okay, now for the titanium ones. With back cut, because it's got a bigger, should point out it's got a bigger uh, face angle here. 84. Dude's light. And then with no back cut. 75 grams, the thing's really light. But the biggest thing is also, this is our exhaust valve, that's the stock one, 93. So the thing that'll probably will, usually you're not very aggressive on exhaust anyway, but 93 grams, this is the heaviest um, over either one of these titaniums, because even this one ain't 93, yeah. So still plenty light, I mean, that's really, really light. Anyway, that's what's going on with it. I want to show you this one more thing. This is the intake I'm going to test with it. And this is brand new to try. This is a Dominator Super Victor. I wish I had a CID intake. So if John, if you're watching this, I sure wish I could test one of your intakes. But what I'm going to have to do is because I milled some off this head and those intakes never line up anyway. Usually what they're doing is they're high. And if you watch my videos over Christmas, you know that having the intake up like this, is the worst thing. So I need to drag it down. So what I'm going to do is I've got a mock-up block. After I get the... After I final mill this, although it's milled right now, and I may just leave it at 55, I'm gonna put it on a mock-up block, and I'm gonna mill off the sides on this intake, which hopefully I can still get the O-ring to seal. If not, I'll use a regular gasket. Mill this down so that it sits perfectly with that, and then obviously port that manifold. This is the reason why this test may not happen as quick as I want, because I want it perfect when I go. The other thing is I'm running shaft rockers now, and I need to get check the piston, or check piston the valve too, but the rockers, I didn't check the um, heights on them because here's the other disadvantage I didn't think of. On a titanium valve, I did not put a hard tip on. Because these are 8 millimeter stems, I usually don't put a hard tip on an 8 millimeter stem whenever I order a titanium valve. And the reason why is the way those hard tips go is they put a little pin through here in the center, but that pin's really small. In 11 30 seconds, the pin's bigger because the valve is bigger. So it's really easy, kind of, I don't know, easy, but they can break off the tips. So I'd much just rather use a lash cap, but the lash cap actually makes the valve a little bit taller. And that's where the problem comes in. When you run your stock, the bar that comes with this and your stock rocker, you can't adjust it, right? It's not adjustable. Obviously, you torque it down, everything's fine. But if you make your valve taller, that whole geometry is off. So you could shim behind the stand, but I'm not sure certain that the bolts are long enough for what I'm going to try doing anyway. So instead, I've got a shaft rocker system. I'm just going to do that. It will take me longer to change cams for sure because I'm going to have to lash each, not really lash, but adjust the valves for each one, a quarter past zero on each one, instead of just torquing them on, torquing it on, torquing it on. So not as easy with the, that setup, more time consuming, but better overall. But anyway, there's your video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Um, feel free to pause and look at the flow sheets. Uh, you guys, remember I am no Superman. I did race Superboy. I don't port cast iron heads. I don't respond to Instagram or Facebook messages. The best way to reach me is through email, wangunatracing at gmail.com. You guys take care.